Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound, and we are going to finish chapter 6.2 on the application of genetics today from Purposeful Designs Life Science. Um, this will also conclude our unit on genetics. And we're going to finish by talking about the Human Genome Project from section 624. So our objective today is to evaluate the social and ethical issues of the Human Genome Project's findings. So to start with, scientists identified 21,000 genes in the human body through this project. So you have 21,000 genes in your chromosomes that uh, make 21,000 different proteins. So these are what make you you. Scientists map the nucleotide sequence of human DNA. So every single nucleotide they, they mapped and figured out what they were. Information from the project could lead to cures for some genetic diseases, so that would be an excellent outcome from this project. And scientists from many different countries contributed. Some of the countries that contributed were France, Germany, Japan, China, Great Britain, and the United States. So it was not just something our country did, but it is something that was accomplished globally and internationally. So great collaboration between some scientists. Now, one thing they discovered is that humans have what are called single nucleotide polymorphisms. Um, we shortened this to SNPs or SNPs. And this is the point along the DNA at which one nucleotide pair is different from another person's DNA. And there are many locations where this occurs. And these single nucleotide differences are what make each individual unique. And they can be used in many different ways, potentially. Um, some appropriate uses would be for genetic counseling prior to conception. So if they, if uh, you have a certain genetic disorder in your family, or if your DNA was analyzed and there were certain SNPs found, you could receive genetic counseling to counsel you about possible options. Maybe you would reconsider having children and adopt instead. Um, or it would just be to prepare you for the possibilities that you will have a child with a certain disease or disability. Um, but genetic counseling is done today um, for people that have diseases like cystic fibrosis or hemophilia that run in their families to talk about um, the options for them. Also, researchers uh, can use this information for looking for cures or treatments to diseases such as cancer. The SNPs can also show whether you are at increased risk for certain types of cancer. Now, sometimes you may never develop that cancer. There's an environmental trigger that flips that gene on that then um, you are more likely to have the cancer. Um, but we don't know that you would necessarily have a cancer, but it's something you could then look out for, prepare for, um, perhaps change your lifestyle for um, so that you would not develop that cancer or that disease. And so then that would help doctors give preventative medicine advice because they would then be able to tell you what you could possibly do to prevent that disease or to uh, make it more manageable. Okay, make it more manageable by looking at your SNPs. They also, uh, one interesting thing about SNPs is uh, some people might realize that they respond better to certain medications um, than others. Uh, for example, uh, some people, ibuprofen works better than Tylenol or Advil works better than Tylenol. Those are the brand names. Ibuprofen and acetaminophen are the generic names. Um, you might notice something like that. Well, scientists can actually predict that by looking at your SNPs. Um, and so it would also help doctors prescribe medications. Looking at your SNPs, they would see that you would respond better to certain medications than others. Now, some inappropriate uses of knowing somebody's SNPs. 
would be that insurance companies or employers might discriminate against people carrying genes for diseases by denying employment or insurance coverage. So they might be able to look at your SNPs and say, you know, this person is going to develop, say, MS, a disability that could put them in a wheelchair or something in the long run and would cost us a lot of money. And so uh, an insurance company might deny coverage because they don't want to pay for that care later on in life. Um, employers might look at it and say, wow, um, this person is going to develop this disease potentially. So we don't want to hire them because they're going to need a lot of time off and everything um, because of that in the future. So we don't want to invest in them. That would be an inappropriate use of this information. Also, parents wishing to create designer children. Um, they could look at a child's uh, SNPs and say, well, there are issues with this child. We do not want to have this child. Uh, or we may develop genetic engineering uh, capability to change those things in a child that a parent doesn't want. And um, that would be really messing with God's creation by creating designer children. And we also, we've talked about the issues with genetic engineering before, that it, it could be potentially dangerous for those children. Um, we don't know what would happen with that. So that would be also an inappropriate use to look at a child's DNA before they're born to see if the parents um, wish to alter that child's DNA. So our objective today was to evaluate the social and ethical issues of the Human Genomes Project's findings. Like many things with technology, there are pluses and minuses. There are pros and cons. And it's what we do with that information, um, how we use it, that determines if we're using it ethically, if we're using it according to God's word or not. So we really have to be in God's word to determine um, how we should use these uh, emerging technologies. So don't forget five questions um, in your margins and keep watching this to uh, answer the questions at the end of the video.